So hey guys, thanks for clicking on this video and tuning in. I'm your host today, Brady Cardici, and today I have the pleasure of sitting down with a man to my left. He's a Toronto-based dancer, choreographer, and all-around good guy. Welcome to the show, Tiki Carlo. Jeez. How's it going, buddy? Thanks for coming on, man. I appreciate I'm good, it. I'm good, I'm good. Um, so I wanted to kick things off by talking about your passion for dance and choreography. Um, so I wanted to know a little bit about kind of where that came from and how you cultivated it. Honestly, it came from like my family and stuff, like, because they're Jamaican, so a lot of, um, the things that were going on in the house were like dance hall or just even loud movement, anything like that. Um, my mom is a singer. My aunties used to play piano. My other aunties used to sing. So there's always like music going on in my life and stuff. So, and watching BET and stuff, like you just get inspired by like the movement. They were doing like dancing. And after they came up with Stop the Yard, You Got Serve. Big movies. What other movie? Like, Save the Last Dance. Step Up 2. Step Up 2, Step Up 1. Like, so it's just like, when I was watching that, I was always trying to imitate it. It started off with imitating it and just having fun with it. And after I used to go to like these parties and um, and they used to be push me in the middle and be like, yo, go dance, go dance, go dance. And they would have dance competitions or like for like $50. So I'm like, yo, I'm getting the $50. So from that, I remember one time losing and I was oh, like, no. nah, I have to go back. I have to go back. I was probably like, eight or so, eight or so, and I was like, nah, I have to go back. So I guess that pushed me to keep dancing, and as people were watching me dance, they're like, yo, you should actually do keep this. But you're eight, you know? You, all you just want to do is stay home and drink Kool-Aid and just chill, you know? Yeah, yeah. But people actually seen me, seen the passion in me. So from that, I started, I started just taking classes and stuff, or like just doing foolishness in my room, trying mm. to break dance <laughs> and all that. <laughs> and after, um, from that, my, my sister, like, if it wasn't for my sister right now, shout out my sister. Shout out your sister. Shout out my sister, BB. <laughs> if it wasn't for my sister right now, I wouldn't be here, like, at all, actually. Because mm -hmm. she, she used to, I say kidnap, because she used to use me to go, like, bring me to, like, um, this dance this dance team called Bosi Crew. Um, so I started off there, and they were, they brought me in. I remember one, one of the guys, his name's Highlight, he brought, he gave me, like, 50 packs of CDs, and he just told me to go, like, just go practice these dances and go listen to these music, right? And from there, I was just like, all right, I'm going to take this to another level. And I was only, like, 11. A lot of time. At, at this time, right? Yeah. I, only 11. I did my first performance at, in grade six, and I won it. And after from there, I was like, yeah, this is... That's your thing. This is what I love. Like, this is how I feel. Like, this is how I express my feelings, you know? So from there, that's where it came off. Nice. Um, so, you know, talking about you growing up as a kid, um, did you have, I know you mentioned your sister is a big supporter of yours, but did you have any other role models or someone that you look up to that inspired you at that time? Yeah, for sure. Like my mom, my dad, uh, my, one thing I, I also, I also take like little ins inspirations from like people and stuff. Okay. So one of the inspirations were like, like Iverson, right? Cause he was like aggressive, even though he was like, I guess six feet or under the, the, under the normal, under like, the height, normal height of of being in the NBA, just yeah. the way his his passion was, he was fearless. Like, you know, he crossed out Michael Jordan and yeah. go, you know. So <laughs> the fact of him being fearless, I he was one of my favorite players as well. Mm. So I took that from him. Also, like, there's a Honey Badger, which also was um, fearless as well. It's like one of the smallest. You guys Google it, search it up. It's like one of the smallest. It looks like a skunk, right? But it will go. It's ferocious. And, yeah, you will, it will go and fight a lion, like, and it's like. If you guys see it, it's like real small. Other than that, there's also like people like my mentor Trevor Brown. Okay. Um, Tabby, Tabby's also a choreographer and a dance group called Baby Boys, which is like the way I, I dance was inspired from from them as well. And like dance group before that, where it was like Dainty Crime, Mad Skills, and like the list goes on and stuff. So yeah. it's like little inspirations from there, which I use in my dance moves, come from that as well. And also like the main Inspiration is also dance on, you know. Okay, okay. Dance on Afro beats, I guess. All right, so those yeah. are the main two. Okay, perfect. Um, so as you were developing your skills as a dancer and choreographer, did you have kind of like a an aha moment or like a, a solidified moment where you're like, man, okay, like I can make this my career, like I'm actually pretty sick. Yeah. So it's so like everything also happened in 2016, where it's it was probably like one of those like every year is up and every year is down. So mm -hmm. like 2016, no, 2015 was like my down year, right? And what couple of my, my, actually no, my cousin and my friend, 
call me and they're like, this is the time I wasn't dancing. Like I stopped dancing when I came out of high school, right? Okay. Because like when you come out of high school, it's like, you know, what's what's your next job? Yeah, like, it's a transition period. Are, yeah, it was like, are you going to school? Like mm -hmm. what? All those stuff. So at that time, I wasn't dancing and they're like, yo, come to the dance studio. And I was like, yeah, okay. I haven't danced in yeah. so long. Like why you didn't bring me? I suck, you know? And then... I, I went to Urban Arts. I don't know if you heard about it. I haven't, no. Yeah, so it's a it's a dance studio. It's a it's an actual art program. It's okay. on Jane and I think Jane and Western Road. So they develop kids with their art and help them with all that. So they had a dance program. So I went there. I was shy. I was so shy. I had my hoodie on, chilling like chilling in the back, yeah, blue yeah. games like <laughs> you know. I was just chilling like, and after um, this song came on. Bounce it. I don't know if you guys heard of it, but you guys probably, if you, you'll see the video, but okay. from that video, like from that, that same time was every, when everything went like. Kind of uphill. Yeah, probably. because once I did that video, I posted it and it went viral, right? Okay. It, went, it went viral. It was like, it had like two mil on Facebook. It was wow. like crazy. People were hitting me up. You know, girls were hitting me yeah. up. I was like, okay. Hey, hey. I was like, this is what I can get out of it. So yeah, yeah. Um, from there, I got bookings for like music videos. My first professional music video was doing a music video for um, Mr. Vegas. Okay. Um, yeah, Mr. Vegas. Yeah, I think it's just him, Mr. Vegas. I did after that. I did. What else did I do? <laughs> Sorry. No, it's okay. Well, I think. Yeah, after that, I don't know if I did another music video. But I know. Didn't you? Well, you didn't. I, you. I know you choreographed uh, one of Sean Paul's videos, didn't yeah, you? Yeah. So also that. So. That's why, yeah, everything was a timeline. So it came after that. It, I think I just kept doing videos on Instagram and people were loving it. Okay. And then I did a work, the work video, which was like a Rihanna, the Rihanna work. Mm -hmm. I did like a video for that and it went stupid viral. Like it just, it flooded Twitter, it flooded Instagram, it flooded everything. Probably MySpace too. Oh my like God. everything. That's crazy. So then after that, I ended up, I think a week after that, I ended up being in the music video. I got. I had to do the audition. I ended up being in the music video. Okay. So I met Rihanna, Drake, and, and it was. Uh, the, they filmed it in. Yeah, Toronto, they filmed right? it in here. The the real jerk, actually. Oh right, right. Yeah, okay. So yeah, they yeah. filmed it there, and then from there, I was like, "Yo, this this is something I, I like. It's naturally for me to do. It's natural. Like even though there's the training process, mm -hmm. it's like a natural like gift that I have. So I'm like, let me just use this because this yeah. is what I love to do, and this is how I express myself. You know. So I you I. From there, I did that, and after I just kept doing music videos and music kept videos. Kept building, yeah. Kept, just kept building, and and just kept seeing the vision yeah. as I was going on. And, and I feel like it's such like a, a satisfying feeling too, because it's like you know when you're when you're younger, it's like oh man, like I don't really know what I want to do with my yeah. life, and then when you find that, it's like you have like clarity. It's like yeah, twenty yeah, twenty yeah. vision. Yeah, it's you know? exactly what it is. Exactly yeah. what it is. Because at the time, I didn't know what I wanted to do and stuff. So mm -hmm. now that like I'm into stuff like this, it's like. It's helping me figure out myself and what I actually love to do and what makes me smile to go to work. Because I, I know a lot of people are like, damn, uh, I'm here again. Like, yeah. they see that alarm clock and they're like, nah, nah. I got to get up. Uh. Yeah, like so when I have like music videos or anything, it's just like, I'm like, yeah, let's go, let's go. Like, so it's just the fact of that makes me happy. I just keep going with it. That's good. So I know you mentioned, uh, I think it was you were 12, you had your first performance. Like, yeah, yeah. Can, you, can you just like give a little bit of a breakdown into that, what that whole experience was like? Because I know the first time for anything is like, it's pretty nerve wracking. So my first performance was at, it was at Cheney, okay. my middle school. It, they, did, they made a competition called So You Think You Dance. So at that time, So You Think You Dance was like the biggest thing in well, watching it, right? It was, yeah. like, it was like another, it was like American Idol, but like in the dancing version, basically. Um, from that, it was, it was honestly an amazing experience. Just the fact of like winning and like, I remember my grade six class was like rooting for me. They're like, yo, this, you have to win, you have to win. Like, and it was just, it was honestly a good experience though. Like I still watch that video up to this day and it just inspires me. Just the fact that I came, like I'm not gonna say I came from nothing, but just the fact that I came from like a little young mm. boy that's in his room just dancing and stomping the, the floor and stuff. So yeah. Came a long way, that's for yeah, sure. Yeah, basically. Um, so speaking of performances, one I want to talk uh, now, one I want to talk about, I may butcher the name. So mm -hmm. it's the Kapu Kapa freestyle routine that you did for the World of Dance uh, performance in 2017. It's crazy because I don't, I actually don't know how to pronounce it. Okay. Oh well. Okay. Yeah. Well, I gotta look that up to see <laughs> to see how to pronounce it afterwards. But um, so I know that you obviously you performed on stage, but you actually choreographed the whole routine. Yeah. So I know yeah, it was yeah. like it was like a group performance. Yeah. Yeah. So. 
I mean, for people out there who don't know what goes into, what went into that routine, would you be able to just <laughs> break down kind of the amount of work that was on your end to yeah, make that yeah. happen? It was crazy because I was in the kitchen. I, I think I went through like a YouTube, you know when YouTube just plays the next song? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess I was playing another a song before that, I don't remember, but I was playing a song and after that song came on and I was in my kitchen and I was with my little brother and we're making eggs, right? Okay. We're just cooking up the egg and just having fun, just just basically being foolish, right? And then he was doing moves or, or like he was just doing random moves. And I was like, you'll do that again. I was like, you'll do that one more time. He doesn't dance, so it's just, oh, okay. it's just funny. I'm like, you'll do that again. And I right, switch this up, switch this up. And after I just legit just made it off of my little brother, like off wow. of my little brother, the way he was moving and stuff. So that's how I came about with that choreo. Also, it was also like inspired by Afro movement as well and dance hall movement as well. So. Okay. So that was a part of it, and my little brother was a part of it. Yeah, little brother. Yeah. So shout out, shout out to shout out my little brother, <laughs> Josiah, <laughs> making moves. Awesome. Um, so were you like? I, I know I was watching the video, and it seemed to get like a positive reaction. The crowd yeah. was going crazy. How did you feel knowing, like, you were, you know, you choreographed and you performed? How did you feel about the performance? Yo, know, when I get on stage, I, I like, you, do I, you black out? I black out. Like once I on, I'm on the stage, I black out. Like, and I I feel like that's one thing. I learned from being a dancer where it's like because it, it, it happens consistently it's like when um it's like when um an nba player is like taking a free throw they black out like they just block out everything right mm -hmm. it's not like like if you ask an nba player that they'll be like what what fans like what are you talking about right, you know yeah. so it's like it's like what from that i just black out but certain times where it's like certain reactions i'm like oh smokes okay. i felt that like but from that performance or on that performance i think i just blacked out because it was my first big performance on like a stage using other dancers and stuff shout out to all the dancers that were in there by the way shout out to them. so like using other dancers and stuff it was my first actual performance and prof a professional one too like mm -hmm. where we danced yeah um that's a, so big, that's a big was, deal yeah so i was like yo let me it's it's, it's game time it's like fourth quarter you know <laughs> yeah literally <It's> OT. <laughs> um so on the topic of choreography um I know you, you touched on it a little bit in your previous answer, but how do you approach like choreographing your routine? Does your process differ based on if you're if you if you know you're going to perform this on a stage yeah. versus oh this is going to be a, a routine that's going to be in a music video? Does it differ? Yeah, yeah. It, it honestly like from, so you're saying from like a music video to, to yeah. On so stage. the way the way I choreograph is for music videos more like it's less movement because you know how okay. they have to cut they have to cut it and stuff. It's mm -hmm. not like they just show at one time and that's so it's more movement and on like on instagram and stuff it's more it's 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 just more like detailed type of feel like it's more mm -hmm. detail it's more because like with the difference between doing a music video is i'm using other others right with like right. the instagram is just me okay so it's just me doing how i feel and stuff so doing it on on the music video it's it's more just movement and grooving and like Yo, by the way, I have to teach you a movie before you go. Okay, okay. We'll, we'll get that on camera. If it, well, maybe if I do a good job, we'll keep it in. But. So, um, so yeah, just just by that, just by the the movement of like the music video, and also what the director wants as well. Okay. And the, or the producer or how the music is. If it's like fast, it's obviously gonna be fast movement. You know, fast movement. But certain times you can use fast songs, but use slow movements. Okay. You know, and just put it together, but it has to be on, you uh, know? On now, do they, now for the for the director, are they, like, I, I, I can assume in a music video, because there's a camera that he wants, like, the movements to be pretty, to be tight, mm -hmm. tight and pretty technical. Yeah. Do you, is, or have you been on sets where, you know, like, the, the director has asked you to do it multiple times? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, they do. Okay. They make sure they get it on, like, on the T. Like, on the T, yeah. On the T. It can't be, because, like, remember, they have to, the way they shoot it is, like, it has to be on point. If someone mm. messes up, they, it's like again. Yeah, we're gonna do like it even the, even as a dancer, even as a dancer, it's like when I'm on set for for a music video, it's like yeah, we have to do it again. Okay. You know, like there's chore choreographers that are saying like yeah, do it again. Like that I've worked with, you know, so because they want it to be on point and like clean and stuff. It's like I don't even know how to explain it. It's like it has to be precise, almost like perfection. Perfection, like it has to be clean. Certain times where it's like. Say for instance, someone does something different. Something okay. they might just be like, "Okay, you'll do that again," you know. Right. So it's like, or like, 
even when I did the work, the Rory Woods music video, right? I think I was in the camera and it was like, it was like, it was like, mom, I wasn't even supposed to do that. But the fact of like my facial expressions, they're like, yeah, yeah, let's do that again, you know. So, it's, so stuff like that, they just, they just take it as they go as well. So, but like for the cro- the choreography to be on point and clean, so they can edit it and be nice, it has to be like perfect. Okay. Now this just popped into my head, but I was watching uh, Dr. Phil of all shows, yeah, yeah. and they had, um, I, be- I believe it was Lady Gaga's choreographer on the show, mm-hmm. and so he was explaining how, um, in terms of like professional dancers, when they go into audition, it's like mm-hmm. you have to pick up the routines pr- fairly quickly. Yeah. <laughs> Like he was, he was saying he's because I guess um, there was the, this woman on the show who wanted mm. to be a dancer, and he was kind of like telling her, "Oh, like you, you have a shot to make it or not." Um, mm-hmm. And he was saying he's like, "Man, like you, you, like you picked up the routine fairly quick, but you got to be even quicker. Like I expect you to get it down in like two or three. You know what I mean?" <laughs> yeah, I actually experienced that. I performed what was it yesterday? Yeah, yesterday at Giants of Africa. Okay. Um, my friend Sherry Silver, which is like amazing choreographer, she choreographed for for Charles Gambino, Wiz Kid. Mr. Easy, One Republic, the, like, you know, the, list the big just, hitters, yeah. Yeah, you know, the list just goes on, right? Mm-hmm. So she called me Tuesday and she was like, I'm coming in town, I'm in Toronto. Um, what do you want to perform for Giants of Africa? So I was like, yeah, damn, you know, like, mm-hmm. all right. So I was like, all right, all right. So I, I, I think Wednesday, yeah, Wednesday, I went to the hotel. We, she, she, um, she taught me the choreo. Okay. And she was like, all right, take that, go home, practice. Legit. We probably went over a, a, a lot of times and stuff, and she critiqued me and all that. Mm-hmm. But just the fact of, like, I had to learn it. I had to learn a two-minute choreo. It doesn't seem long, but yeah. when you're on stage... It seems like, like you know, When you're on stage, it doesn't seem long, but when you're watching it, it's just like, you know, it's just like, yeah. it, it feels long. I don't know how to explain it, because well, when you're on stage, you're having steps. fun. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's not even, like, the amount of time, it's, like, the steps, right? Mm. So she, yeah, she taught me quick times, performed it Thursday. It wasn't like it was, I performed it Thursday night. I performed it Thursday morning. Oh, wow. So, you, you know, so it's like, I had to, especially because everyone has different lifestyles and stuff. Okay. Or like, everyone's lifestyle also has to do with their, um, what their talent is and stuff. So I was busy at the time. So I had to like focus. There's times mm. where I was just like, I was just chilling. I was just chilling, brush my teeth and I was watching it. Oh wow! Like okay. over and over and over and over and over and like until like I actually got it. Okay. From this and I got on stage and it was just. So dancers out there, if you want to learn choreo, <laughs> like watch it. You know when you're sleeping in bed. Yeah, watch like... it. Watch it all the time. Like yeah. my one of my favorite choreographers tells me all the time. Tabby Rockstar says, "Watch it all the time. It doesn't matter. Go over your steps. Go over your steps. No remix my shit. That's what he says." <laughs> <laughs> So speaking of travel and stuff like that, I, mean, I know your work has taken you uh, to a lot of places. You've been to Jamaica, mm-hmm. LA. I know you've been to the UK. Um, have you? Ha- uh, what's your your the favorite your favorite place you've traveled to so far? And what's a place you want to get to in the future? Oh, uh, my favorite place. Yeah, certain ones have like certain like yeah things about them. Yeah, like because Jamaica is like the tradition. Like that's where everything I the way I move comes from. You know. Right. Yeah, it's just. So would you and say then, Jamaica then? I would I would say, but London is like to be like the to be where I want to be. Mm-hmm. I would say London. Okay. Yeah, I would say London to be honest, because like the way the culture is, because they're also inspired by by the Jamaicans, by Africans, by like everything. It's like it's basically Toronto. Yeah. In a way, like they're just different accents. Like, and multicultural. Yeah, too. legit. So I would say London to be honest. Mm-hmm. I I would okay. love to be there for like five, three years and just working like. Okay. London is a place that I would love to be. When I went down there, it was like the love that they were showing me was like ridiculous. <clears throat> I remember sitting down there, going up to a hotel, like going up to my friend's hotel. Shout out Nife and Sophia. I was going up up to their hotel, and after the security stopped me, he's like, "Where are you going?" Mm-hmm. And after I was like, "Oh, I'm just waiting for them." But I was waiting in the lobby. The other security came and he's like, "You're you're Carlo in the ends, right?" Mm-hmm. I would, I would do the accent, but I'm not going to try. So he's like, you're Carl on the ends. You're the dancer, right? Yo, let this guy up. Like, stuff like that. So I'm like, whoa, like, I'm That's in, cool. I'm nine hours away from you guys. Like, it's not like versus Brampton and Pickering. Like, I'm nine hours away and you, you guys know me. Like, I would just, from there, I was like, yo, the love down here is like ridiculous, you know? So I would say London, okay. for sure, we're number one. All right. Um, so speaking of places, I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about Toronto for a sec. 
Now, I know you've lived here for most of your life, you know, you're from Brampton and all of that. How have you, how have you seen the culture of the city, the city shift? Um, because I know like back in the day, there was this thing where it's like, oh, if you want to make it in entertainment, you got to yeah. go to LA, you got to go to New York. Yeah. But now I feel like in Toronto, that vibe is changing. Yeah, now it's, I feel like it's changed because also social, social media as well. Like yeah, that's it's true. more like everyone, everyone can see you now. Like social media really did a, a big thing, but also like you have to shout out to the man Jake. Of course, for of like course. putting putting everything on, and obviously Cardinal Official, like the, mm -hmm. the OGs, and and it, it goes on, and goes on. But I feel like it it did change for the better, and it's more, it's better because, for example, you guys can do opportunities like this, right? Where it's like, if you guys started it back then, it would be like, like who you guys gonna really interview? You yeah. know, we wouldn't have that even the platform to like actually reach out. Yeah, even I mean? like, like even that, that, even just. You like just quick DM, quick email, or like something like that. So I feel like in, um, not Instagram, social media in the in the platform mm -hmm. really changed it for us and really helped us get out of. And even like the artists, even Tory Lanez, The Weeknd, yep. Party Next Door, you know, the list just goes on. Like young rappers, like old rappers, like everything. So I feel like they really opened up the door for everybody. It's not just rappers or music or music in general. It's like dancers like us or. People that want to do the interviews or, something, or yeah, art yeah. or producers or it can be anything like mm -hmm. basketball too. So it's like it really opened the door for us to actually show our talent because the city is talented, right? So that's what I really like about it now. <clears throat> like before people, when you go to places, they're like, what is Toronto? Yeah, they wouldn't even know about it. <laughs> like, yeah. what, Canada? Or they just think we have a bunch of snow <laughs> yeah. and that's it. And we're we all live in igloos. <laughs> like, yeah, like they don't even know what, what it's about. So it's like... The fact that they know it, it's, yeah. it's really appreciative. Even like Caravana, like, mm. so even Caravana also put us on a map because people want to come down here and just just vibe, you know, get a look of bubble, you know, yeah. what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? So Move a little it's, bit. Just, it's, just, it's just a vibe now. Like, I really like the city now. 100%, I agree with that too. Um, now on that topic, um, so for someone who, you know, maybe they're just starting out or even people who are currently professionals in, in dance, uh, do you have any advice that you'd give them or anything that uh, they shouldn't do if they want to get noticed in the industry? Um, I guess be pushy. Be pushy? I guess like try to like, I guess not, I don't want to say try too hard because everyone's trying is different, you know? Yeah, that's true. So I guess like trying, I guess not being yourself. That's what it is. I mean, I guess you have to be yourself. Not yeah. even I guess, you have to be you yourself. You have to, yeah, yeah. You have to be yourself to get there you can't be this person and try to get because you're gonna end up being with this person right and then you're gonna bump heads with that person if you're like you know what i mean okay so you have to just legit be yourself know who you are before you try to go out there because like there's times where it's just like for example like i used to play basketball and it's just like i know i, I like for me i think i was good for other people they think i was bad for like you know what i mean so it's just like i feel like i was doing it to just be a part of my friends, you know? To fit in, yeah. To fit in, right? Mm -hmm. so, and then when you get there, you're like, am I really going to the league? Like, you know, you're just there. <laughs> it's like, a tough truth to break you're yourself. You're like, yo, man. like, could I be, really be the <laughs> next Nate Robertson? Like, yeah. So then it's like, you have to just know yourself. You have to, yeah. like, legit know yourself to... Like, I'm not saying don't try things, because if I never tried to go back into dancing, it wouldn't be here, like... Or even if it's, like, anything, you could be just be who you want to be. Like, don't... Mm -hmm. And don't try and put on a front for other people. Yeah, don't try that. Because like, there's a lot of people that do that. There's a lot of people that do that in the, in the world. Yeah, 100%. And they just end up being the, where the, yeah. exactly where they start. And real people can like sniff through that too. You like, can it, like, I feel like real people are like dogs. Like you get this, yeah. uh, it's exactly like smelling fear. Like there's certain people that just try to, try to get into something, but yeah. not with the wrong intentions, mm. you know? So mm -hmm. it's like, I'm not saying certain people like that, I know. I'm just saying from what I see, like people try to get into things with the wrong intention, whether it's like trying to take what's yours or trying, like legit probably just trying to take what's yours and, and cut. Yeah, you know? being so selfish in that being sense. Being selfish in that way. I feel like with what Toronto, like I know why Toronto is like how they are because not a lot of people make it out of here. So they no, try yeah. to grab what's... They want and, like all yeah, they want all of it and, like, and back let's, away. let's cut, let's cut. Like, yeah. So I feel like with... I tell people this all the time. The reason why... Um, the reason why Drake is like who he is is obviously because of friends and like because his friends knew who they were. Like 
exactly like when I look at them, I'm like, yo, now they're doing exactly what they actually love. Like, I know Ovio Nico, he he mm. he played ball, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the fact of like, obviously certain things ever happen, whatever the NBA or not, but now he runs a whole a whole tournament, a whole big tournament, which is like inviting NBA players. So and stuff like that. I feel like everyone needs to know their roles and certain things that they do. Mm-hmm. So stuff like that, it's just like now you have that opportunity. Like, because I think everyone wants to be the man. Ah, uh, yeah, you everyone know? wants so to be it's the like, top dog. If you know your role and stuff, you can get there. Like, if we right now is like put something together, we're just like, you know, I'm doing the dance and you're doing the interview. If we go on tour, mm. you guys are, you get know what I mean? It's like, yeah. it's not like you're trying to say, I'm trying to dance and yeah, you're, you're trying not, to interview. Yeah, you know yeah, what I yeah, mean? Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. just like, so stuff like that. So I feel like if everyone knows their role in a in a, a whole team and squad, or even Toronto, you would like go so far. Even yeah. if it's like collabs, like like you, you know what I mean. So mm-hmm. even if you collab with another person that does another interview, yeah. and it's like, what's your experience doing an interview with this person or this person or this person? So I I feel like that's what needs to be in Toronto. It's not just the man, like just being the man. Like everyone wants to be the man because men men have egos, right? Yeah, of course. So it's just like if. We all came together, put something together. It would be like it'd go. It'd it would, we'll believe on Pluto or something like. <laughs> yeah. So it's just like I feel like that's what's missing in Toronto, or it could be anywhere. Yeah. Because obviously I live here and I experience it. It could be anywhere. Mm-hmm. Like. So with obviously 2019 coming to an end, I mean we're already in December. I can't mm-hmm. believe it already. Um, do you have any goals or anything in particular you want to accomplish for 2020? Any projects in the works that you want to? Uh, yeah, I just want to say New Year, New Me. Okay, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> nah, honestly, like I, I feel like in 2018 and 19, I haven't put out a lot of content okay. for like the people that like that watch my videos daily. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm trying to push out more content, and it's not like. I'm trying to switch up the vibe. You know, it's not where I'm just going to the studio and stuff. Right, right. I'm trying to switch it up where it's like. Could be me on the CN Tower, you know. Like, yeah. <laughs> it could be me in a restaurant while people are eating. It could be like anything, you know. So on the street or something. On the yeah. street. So I'm trying to keep up. I'm trying to do more content and stuff, and have more fun with it, and yeah. and just have yeah, just have fun with it. I don't want to look at it as like I need certain likes. I need this. Yeah, I need this. It's I like, just oh, want to. Yeah, this you know. Views, yeah. I just want to have fun with it and just. And just do what I got to do because that's the best part of it, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just, and you're and you're having fun doing it too, right? So yeah, yeah, for sure. Better. Like, it's 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 fun, you know. It's fun, like just seeing comments and stuff, and like seeing all that. It's fun to put out content and stuff. Yeah, hundred percent. I agree just with a, that too. it's like this, just sitting the back there and just like it's not even just watching yourself. It's just like, geez, you know, it gets you amped. <laughs> yeah, it makes you want to make the other. Vi- yeah, the it just video. yeah, it just makes you want to make another video. I don't look at, at anyone. I also video and be like, yo, this is competition. I have to mm. be better than yeah, this. Yeah, no, yeah, it's yeah. just, okay. I just want to have fun doing it, to be honest. That's a good approach. Um, so uh, for people who want to learn more about you, want to kind of see uh, you as a dancer, how you how you dance, all that stuff, get in contact with you, book you, mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff, uh, where can they reach you at? You know, they can reach me, Carlo in the Ends on Instagram, Carlo in the Ends on Twitter, in the Ends, MGNT at, at gmail.com. That's the email. You can reach me. You reach my BBM, I'm just gonna have <laughs> <laughs> my MSN, my MySpace, oh my Facebook, actually, Tiki Carlo, T E K E E, Carlo with a K K K A R L O. Awesome. All right, that's where you can find him, guys. Tiki, thanks for coming on the show, buddy. Really appreciate it. All right, that wraps it up, guys. Stay tuned and uh, thanks for tuning in. Hey.